The tactic that you've been waiting for is finally here. Today, I'll be pulling back the curtains of my newest creation, a tactical masterpiece that's been turning heads on Twitter and tearing up the AI in FM24. We set out to dominate opponents with a great build-up structure, breaking opposition lines, manipulating space, fluidly transitioning into different shapes and effective use of a false nine, plus a pressing forward on defend. Not only did we manage an invincible season with young boys in Switzerland, but we also went on to win league titles with 150 to one odds and proven the tactic is suitable at non-league. This isn't just your average tactic, it's a meticulously crafted one designed to outthink, outmaneuver and outplay any opponent who dares to step on that field. So buckle up, grab your notepads and prepare to witness the future of football manager tactics the rdf 4231 is here to dominate and i'm inviting you to join the revolution let's make history together i hope you like that intro but now we are going to break down the tactic in three parts to build up structure the attacking play but also the rest defense and why it's so effective for our tactic the team's tactical setup features a 4-2 formation during the initial stages of possession but it can be flexible as the defensive midfielder on the right has the freedom to advance up the field the primary goal during the build-up is to stretch the opposing team's defensive line and patiently wait for gaps to appear once the opposition's defense is stretch the team strategy involves breaking through the lines either by passing directly from the defense to an attacker who can then redirect the ball to another attacker preferably making a run in behind or we can stretch the opposition's first line enough to play a line breaking pass into a midfielder a tool we can use to help stretch the lines of the opposition is working the ball out wide and then moving it back inside moving it out wide will attract one of their wide players to press moving away from his central partners and creating space between them that's us manipulating and creating space between their wide and central players. Of course, we have to work the ball to exploit the space between the winger or the wide player and his central partner. Furthermore, the wide strikers play a pivotal role in supporting the first and second phase build up by constantly dropping deeper into the midfield to establish a numerical advantage. The team's focus is on playing through the opponents whenever possible, combining in tight areas through the middle or circulating the ball out wide before transitioning it into central areas, effectively exploiting available spaces in the process. As the team transitions into a 2-3-1-4 formation, it is important for the tactic to maintain fluidity. For an example, up to four players can function as the primary attacking midfielder in a move. Depending on the match situation, the attacking midfielder, or one as I like to call the role, in the attack could be the right striker, left striker, central attacking midfielder, of course, or the right sided defensive midfielder. Being able to positionally interchange so often and rapidly can hurt any opponent's defensive structure. Even though we're talking about the attack, still, the wingback's positioning is key because not only does their patience going forward means we don't get exposed too easily, but it also allows us to keep pressure on should the opponents clear the ball out the box. We are positionally set up to keep the pressure going and going as defences are now focused on defending their box, which is another trick. We look to get the opposition to focus more on defending their box, therefore having counter-attacks as an afterthought. Throughout this tactical approach, the central striker, the main striker, the primary striker's sole responsibility is to score goals. But we want all attackers to be involved in goal scoring, so we effectively overload the opposition's box so we can cut the ball back and create high quality scoring chances. If the low cutback option isn't on, floated crosses to the far post is another way for us to create high quality scoring chances inside the box as a result of us overloading it. So in attack, we don't lose out on our fluid movement and interchanging. We are set up to provoke many counter movements as at least two of our strikers will look to drop off their attack line while we have runners from midfield looking to push forward into the attack line. This poses a conundrum for defenders and midfielders on who to mark. For instance, if a centre back opts to close mark a striker dropping deep, it creates space for our attacking midfielder to exploit. It's all about manipulating space. But not everything has to be so strong structured to a T or just always listening to me. We have three strikers, one being a complete forward. So I do want some expression and I want players taking their initiative. I just have to set the conditions for that to be possible.
Now, you may have heard me bang on about rest defense, rest defense, and rest defense throughout this whole video. Now, it's fairly easy to actually set up a rest defense, but how do you make one effective? It's all good just having one, but can it then be effective to keep the pressure going and going? What is rest defense? Rest defense is a tactical term to describe the attacking team structure that ensures a good transition into counter pressing and defending upon losing possession of the ball. If a team's rest defense structure is good, it means it lends itself nicely to immediately put the opponent under pressure as soon as they recover possession. So when talking about someone's rest defense, it's about their ability to attack efficiently and yet have a structure in place for the moment the ball is taken away from them. Some other tactical terms related Related to rest defense are structure, compactness, movement, counter-attack, counter-pressing, pressing and transitions. With that, here are four important points to how we effectively use rest defense in Football Manager. It's a big part of our attacking structure. 1. When we are in an attacking position, it's important to maintain a 2-3 structure to ensure we are prepared to regain possession and stifle the opposition's counter-attacks. 2. This setup allows us to apply pressure and overwhelm the opposition in case they win the ball back, preventing them from easily transitioning into dangerous attacking positions. Again, our rest structure is a 2-3, but our 3 will be positionally closer to the box as we progress and look to attack. This just helps overwhelm the opposition and makes it impossible to escape. Number three, by maintaining this attacking structure, we can confidently commit more players into the opponent's penalty area, up to five, when we are on the attack without leaving ourselves too open for quick counter attacks. And lastly, our strategy aims to force the opposition to prioritize defending their own penalty area rather than focusing on launching swift counter attacks against us. Keep them pinned now all points may sound fairly similar but they do or will happen at different stages when we're building we want our two free structures so the wing backs is important to not go further forward too early but in attack as we approach their box our three in the two three will be positionally closer just to make sure we can pin them so that wraps up the tactic the preview of this on twitter is very very popular but now we are going to break down the tactic in fm24 and then lastly we look at the results Before we do have a deep dive in, I just want to give all of my Patreons a massive shout out and a massive thank you. Each and every single sign up to the Patreon, it, it has a massive effect. It really does have a massive effect on Patreon. What these Patreons do get, of course, some good tactical talk, but some early or bonus content. So this tactic right now that we're going to break down, people on Patreon have already seen this. They've got a tactical breakdown, but they've also seen me play games with it as well. They got the download. They got all the secrets. So please do consider supporting through Patreon. Head over to the Patreon and join man like Steve B, Ozan, Saud, Soran and Gwen who have recently signed up. Thank you guys and now I will see you guys in FM. So this is the formation and the sort of backstory to it. First I selected young boys in Switzerland, a very good team expected to dominate the league. As I was playing and we're getting some great results, I started to look at the squad and I'm like, one second, this sort of suits Manchester United. <laughs> so then after finishing that season with Young Boys, Invincible as well, I was licking my lips and excited about trying this at Manchester United. And then when I did, got to Manchester United, we realized the squad is quite literally perfect for the tactic so we are using a sort of it's a 4-2-1-3 i guess you could say a 4-2-3-1 i don't care what you call it we're just going to call it the rdf uh tactic uh, and this is the player roles that i was just doing sorting out here are the player roles so in goal we do have the sweeper keeper on support i think he's not even on attack he is on support at left back we've got the wing back on support ball two ball playing defenders at the back and then another wing back on support on the right hand side these two fellas on support is very important and again they are key to that rest defense but also is the fact playing out from the back that also means they don't make that run too early in midfield we've got a defensive midfielder breaking up play originally at young boys it was a ball winning midfielder so the system looked exactly like this at young boys but then at manchester united and at other clubs you start to work out tweaks but there is seven variations to this listen closely to in, in this video because 
I will tell you when to use these variations as well. Or you could just download them, look at your team, make slight tweaks and make it suitable to your team like I did at Manchester United from Young Boys. So in midfield, we do have the parent of a deep line playmaker, uh, deep line playmaker, defensive midfielder on support paired with uh, Segundo Volante who will be getting further forward. So he's going to get further forward and now we just got a bunch of attackers. Now, not everyone's going to be in that attack line. As we said, there's always going to be a one in our system. At the moment, the starting position, that one is an attacking midfielder on attack. And then the last three, the top three is a complete forward on support, a pressing forward on attack and a full snag on support. In the intro, I did mention about a pressing forward on defend and we did use that a lot. At some clubs, we used it basically throughout the whole season. At Manchester, at Manchester United, sorry, we did use it away against the very good teams. For the player instruction, sometimes I do tend to forget that because not always is it make or break these player instructions, but I do forget that a lot of you are playing on PlayStations or whatever it is. So for the wing backs, dribble more, cut inside and tackle harder. Now, cut inside is very key because I didn't want the wing back to always run wide it's not going to eliminate him running wide not not at all but when the opportunity is there to cut inside i actually want him to drive towards the goal and towards the byline further enhancing those cutbacks within the side defensive midfielder has take more risk and the segundo volante has take more risk dribble more and tackle harder originally the volante was balancing the risk so if we have a ball winning midfielder on the fence he's dribbling less and taking fewer risks so then i just managed that balance that risk Manage the balance. I managed that risk by getting the Segundo Volante to be the one taking more risk and dribbling more. Moving into attacking midfield, we've got attacking midfielder roaming from his position, moving into channels and tackle harder. Moving into channels now, you might see players doubling up. So the Segundo Volante will attack this area here. So the attacking midfielder will naturally drift to the left hand side. And you'll also see some sort of doubling up. So you will see like the attacking midfielder right under the complete forward. Now it might look unorganized, but again, highly effective in breaking down and use of those overload two versus one in attack we've got the full stand running wide with the ball staying wider tackle harder and the complete forward doing the exact same thing lastly pressing forward has no added instruction he would have tackle harder but it's already there now because there are seven different variations we've got the main one so this is the main one i was using at gorica in croatia fantastic results one when you're away against the very good teams we've got the ball winning uh, midfielder version of course that was originally created at young boys we've got ones with the dms mirrored so if actually you've got a left footer that's better suited as a segundo volante then there you are we don't really have to mess with anything else because it doesn't really mess with the dynamics given that the complete forward and full stand will be dropping anyway we've got a poacher version again it did start out with a poacher and then lastly we do have the united version where the team instructions are slightly different so for the team instructions we have attacking width on narrow the approach play play out from the back very important passing directness shorter and slightly higher we are working the ball or hitting early crosses into the box low crosses and run out of defense now this instruction in my head when originally creating it we was my center forward was scoring a lot of headers so i thought why not just absolutely exploit that and get early crosses now it's weird in that i didn't actually get to see us hitting many early crosses i'm not exactly sure what this instruction does but i left it on just in case it was also instruction players to run inside the box or runs inside the box does that make sense so if you do a lot of these instructions have knock-on effects so play out from the back doesn't just instruct your players to pass a shooter it also instructs your defensive midfielders to drop deep overlap doesn't just get your fullback to make forward runs it's going to get your winger to decrease his mentality and hold up the ball more often so hit early crosses i'm not sure if it does get players into the box earlier i don't know what the instruction does but it's not like we are just literally whipping in crosses from ridiculous angles for the manchester united version we do have passing directness on standard with the tempo on slightly lower i do like this combination maybe not suited for the meta or throughout a whole season but i do love this i love this
In transition, we are going to counter press and counter when we have won the ball with the goalkeeper distributing the ball quickly and to the centre backs. Lastly, out of possession, high press, high, uh, much higher defensive line. Trigger press much more often. I guess you can play with it. I wouldn't go lower than more often because we do need players to leave their positions and uh, close the wider area. So we have no wingers. We need you to work hard. We need you to work hard ish. We need you to work hard and you to work hard ish in closing down those wider areas. So again i wouldn't go lower than more often get stuck in step up more and invite crosses for the manchester united one to be fair for the original one this is what it looks like it's basically the same without invited crosses now do not click this on because this will totally mess up your structure and high pressing when they have the ball from goal kicks you're still going to press high you're still going to somewhat prevent the goalkeeper distribution but what this does again talking about knock-on effects it gets these players to then mark tighter then that now we've just lost our structure completely our defensive structure and players are just standing in odd and weird positions set piece is another thing now you don't need an actual routine actually just click right click right click right click right click right and then when you get to the last one get to in swinger that's it your coach will do everything fancy everything sorted and that's it that is the set piece routine that wraps up the tactic now it's time to look at the results because this actually could be the most interesting part and we're gonna start out with the better results well they're all great results i shouldn't have said that i shouldn't have said that they're all great results but we are going to look at some of the surprising results first and then lastly at manchester united and seeing what we did do so talking about that perfect squad i'm so sorry this is the perfect squad garnacho false nine rashford as complete forward hoyland fernandez bruno and then we fernandez then bruno Bruno Fernandes, then we've got Mayunu, Casemiro, two centre-backs, one five. we sold uh, Varane, I bought him one five, so not the elite centre-back, but it makes sense given he's Argentine, he already speaks English, but he's Argentine, so is Lissandro. That's the tactic, now let's look at the results. Now, as you can see in the screenshot, it was Greca that was 150 to 1 to win the league. So we, was, we shouldn't be anywhere near the top, but here we are. In the creation first league, it is Greca on top, winning 30 out of the 36, drawing three and lo losing three. Statistically, absolutely dominated with the most goals, most shots for just absolute domination. The possession numbers are the most surprising with 64% and 89% pass completion. We did complete the most passes. Outchenham, Outchenham, is that how you pronounce this? team's name i'm sorry if i'm butchering it but this team were predicted to finish 11th or 18th at the start of the season so yeah media prediction 18th here but the season preview 11 and they were 50 to 1 to win the league but my god we absolutely dominated losing three drawing 12 and winning 31 128 goals again just dominating statistically now this is where we initially created a tactic young boys we played 38 winning 33 drawing five losing none at all but with young boys we also did get to the round of 16 which is actually very impressive i mean we could look at the board expectation the performance here 75 percent and i also want to show you our results in the champions league because again it's just very impressive in the fact that we were able to beat real madrid at home that match is on my twitter by the way the whole match is on twitter me playing that we beat Shakhtar twice scoring four goals twice uh psg getting a free free draw at home we did get battered away from home though at psg and then um against inter we lost two times but we were competing and that's all we could ask for stats again completely dominated and lastly manchester united you would have seen me on patreon playing games with manchester united where we won the league losing five four of those away from home annoyingly against all the good teams as well annoyingly drawing two and winning 31 we got knocked out in the champions league semi-final but we did win the fa cup three two and the carabao cup as well we ran out as the winners looking at the stats we scored the most goals more shots for defensively Eh, fewest conceded though and most clean sheets possession wise 56 percent of the ball but unfortunately that wraps up today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed it don't forget if you are considering supporting me then do that through patreon i love you guys i love you guys stay safe god bless peace out Boop.